I had time in my hands, no time to waste. Rushed for a taxi, gone in my haste. Damn the damn driver, he could at least wait. So what if the light turned green, my eyes filled with hate. Next cab he came, I rushed to the door, a man got in too. Hey, I was in here before. He looked at me, smiled. We got in the same time. Why don't you get out? It's as much yours as mine. The cabbie asked where to. We both at once said, take me to the tape, please. My face turned bright red. You're going there too? Yes, I have time on my hands. A meeting at four, till then, no demands. I sat back and said, I have a meeting then too. I figured I'd go to the tape or the zoo. Why did you then choose the tape just like me? I'm a vibe, and I guess it came naturally. We both started laughing, his eyes shining bright. I looked at his fingers, no gold ring in sight. His fingers were long. Like a pianist, I thought. I was glad of the red dress I'd recently bought. It fit every curve. I knew I looked good. And the way he looked at me was just as he should. Polite but assertive, assured yet reserved. I crossed knees, turned toes, but boy, I was unnerved. Shall we share the cab fare, he asked. I quickly said, sure. We're sharing the cab. Then I thought, was there more? Where are you from, I then queried. Seattle, he said. Me too, I shrieked out with a turn of my head. What a coincidence this is. Don't you think I sang out? Well, yes, you could say that there's magic about. He moved a bit closer, his knee touching mine. The feeling I felt was no less than divine. We're here, said the cabbie. The break went down tight. I wondered if timing can time things just right. He got out the door as I got out my side. We both paid the cabbie for a real special ride. Then as I stood there, my man facing the tape, I followed his glance, saw someone at the gate. Carl, he called out, and the other responded. I'm here, said my cabbie. Who's he, I then pondered. The two hugged each other and kissed on the lips. <laughs> I felt I was shrinking right down to my hips. This is my lover. You can call him Steve. And you, I never did ask you. Never mind, I'll just leave. <laughs> I left in a hug, looked at my swatch, decided that time he took more than a watch. And then, sharing cabs, a thing of the past. You can find love in taxis, but it's paintings that last. <laughs> My eyes are red from crying, I'm shaking like a leaf. The lawyer listens to my words, he softens to my grief. He's emptied all the money, taken your name off the card. You haven't got a penny, now is the time we hit a pod. First we make up an injunction, hand it to him at his work. He won't even know what happened, that despicable low-down jerk. Oh, what's his work address, he asks. I tell him where it is. While my knees are shaking madly, my mouth answers his quiz. What's he look like, he then asks me, while his pen makes the words fly, because the bailiff needs to know if he's going to give it to the right guy. So I think of how my husband looks, the father of my sons, the man I loved and lived with who's now emptied all our funds. Well, his hair is dark brown, curly, like ripples on smooth tiles. His eyes are blue than the sea, they twinkle when he smiles. His skin is bronze, his smile is white, his nose turns up, it's cute. There's a space between it and his lips, I used to trace the root. And his shoulders, they're wide, while his waist is fairly slim, and his hands and fingers long and thin, just like the rest of him. In fact, he's built just like an athlete. Wait, the lawyer stops my flow. But I've only just begun describing him. There's more to go. I'm sure he's great, but I have got to stop you in your trap. You've drawn a lovely picture. I can see him front to back. I wait. There's a long distance as the lawyer draws me near. There are many things you've told me, much more than I need to hear. I can see that he's a charmer and you find him very groovy, but I'm trying to issue a writ for divorce, not audition him for a movie. <laughs>